All right, now let us say hello to the man who will be headlining this Saturday's UFC Fight Night event in Abu Dhabi, the man who needs no introduction, the one and only, the Korean zombie, Chan Sung Jung, joining us from Fight Island right now alongside his head coach, Eddie Cha. Guys, thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Uh, zombie, it is good to see you again, my friend. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Yes, and it's, uh, it's good to see your English has improved as well. Um, and Eddie, thank you for the time as well. So uh, this is a great fight, and it's a fight that we've been talking about for almost a year now. Um, you know, you guys were supposed to fight in December. Now here you are fighting in mid-October. For you, at this point, Zombie, are, are you almost tired of thinking of Brian Ortega? Like, are you just, you know, kind of anxious to finally fight this guy? Because it feels like we've been talking and building up this fight for a year at this point. <laughs> So, yeah, he agrees 100%. He's been uh, training. We've been, we already ran camp in December before, worked on a lot of stuff. And so he can't wait to actually start using those skill sets and uh, get in that cage October 17th. Considering all that has happened and has been said between both sides, would you describe this fight as a personal fight for you? And, and, and if so, have you ever felt this way about an opponent going into a fight? So he, he treats it like every other fight. Uh, if he made it a personal thing, it wouldn't help him any bit. He believes in the cage. So he's going in the cage believing that he's the better fighter, or Ryan's the better fighter, and he's going to actually go in there and, and uh, just stay focused. It's all business for him. Okay. You know, I remember when we spoke, I think it was in January, and that's kind of when everything escalated with the interview with uh, our friend Jay Park, who was involved as well. Um, and then he responded, and then what happened in March happened. And I'm just wondering, and I know you've said afterwards, hey, you know, the trash talk, it's not really me, and I, and I don't want to do that. Uh, that's not who I am. Do you regret anything that you said about Brian that led to this bad blood? Uh Everyone <laughs> So he, th he thinks twice before trash talking a little bit, only because a third party got injured because of him uh, with Jay Park. And so <clears throat> he, he, he doesn't like the trash talking too much right now at this point because, because of Jay got hurt, you know? Another thing is that <clears throat> everyone keeps thinking that someone's writing his stuff for him or telling him to say this and, uh, and stuff like that. But uh, for that reason, too, he just doesn't want to do it anymore because people don't believe him when he talk, trash talks anyway. So to be clear, it, it is always you who's writing those things. Yeah, it, it's always been him. Okay. Um, by the way, any chance that, that Jay will be in Abu Dhabi? I feel like if one person should be in attendance, it should be him. Like he, he's been a, a central figure in this, in this feud. Is he going to be there? No, he's not. Uh, I spoke with him when I was in Korea too and asked him the same thing. I thought it'd be kind of special for him to come. And <clears throat> I know Brian's got a guy in his corner named Jay Park or Jason Park, which is Jay Park too. So that would have <laughs> been kind of interesting to have two Jay Parks in the corner. <clears throat> but um, he wanted Zompi to literally just focus on the fight. He didn't want any uh, attention drawn towards him. And like you said, he's all business. It's just, it's not just another fight because there's title cont contention on the line, but um, he's going there and there and just treating it like any other fight. He's, he wants to stay focused. And Jay said the same thing. He said, I don't, I don't want to be the center of attention or anything like that. So he's going to pass. And another thing, reason is he, he don't like to do quarantine. <laughs> um, uh, if he were to come here when he goes back to Korea, he'd have to quarantine for two weeks, which uh, Zombie, his wife, and, and our other uh, coach is going to have to do. 
So that was pretty hard. I had to do that too when I went out there. Yeah. So I, I don't blame him for that. No doubt about it. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to ask one more thing about because we haven't talked since uh, the incident in Las Vegas. I, I, and I know he reacted the way he did, um, Zombie did on, on Instagram. But when, when you came back, I, I guess the story was you went to the bathroom and then you found out that, um, that Brian you know, struck your friend, Jay Park. When you came back and, and, and found out about that, how did you react? And you know, were you thinking about going to do something and starting a, a bigger fight? I'm just curious to, to get your side of the story. So, yeah, he, he definitely, he reacted the way he did on, on uh, that big old <coughs> article that he wrote on his page and stuff like that. But uh, he doesn't really feel comfortable talking about that incident too, too much. I mean, he wants to talk about the fight where he's here to fight Brian. Um, what's done is done. But yeah, of course he was upset. He was looking for him and things like that. But uh, <clears throat> he was coming off eye surgery, I think, less than a week ago too. And so we, we were real nervous about that too. Like hopefully nothing happened between the two of them because his eye was still, he literally, um, his eye had double vision like we talked about. One was up. So the eight muscles in the eye, they cut two of them to actually bring it down to level it out. Wow. So, I mean, if you get touched in the eye, anything can happen, you know what I mean? <clears throat> he was less than a week um, week fresh from that surgery. And so that that was our big concern. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like I said, he, he's super focused for this fight. He, he wants to win, but not because of Jay Parker. It, it's just because it's the number three guy in the world. I respect so. that. I, I will uh, I will move on from the subject. I respect that you want to move <laughs> I on. It. Um, and and uh, I wanted to ask you about the eye. How is it? Are, are there any limitations at this point? Any concerns about it whatsoever? Yeah, his eyes one hundred percent. There's no concerns at all. There hasn't been an issue during the whole two week camp. <clears throat> um, yeah, he's crystal sharp with that eye. Uh, he's been looking probably the best he's looked. He's We've gained a little bit of uh, muscle mass as well. His hand speed looks good. We added a couple new things to this camp. And so uh, I think it's going to be the best version of himself. I think from the Moicano fight, we added that little <clears throat> over and, and, and lateral movement to setting up uh, countering that jab. The Frankie fight, we, we worked on uh, counting the check hook because Frankie leads in with that right hand. This fight, we added a few things. So uh, he's, he's excited to show his skill sets. Uh, were you worried that this might affect your career, that maybe you would never fight again? Was this a concern early on in the process when you found out about the injured eye? Yeah, he was <clears throat> at first just because the eyes weren't lining up. He was seeing double. Um, he was seeing slightly double before we started camp when he came to the States, but it was a little bit, I think, to the left or something like that. So when he was looking straight ahead, there wasn't any double vision. And then <clears throat> as sparring and, and the camp started coming, everything just came about where any, anywhere he looked was double vision. And so he was super scared. He had uh, numerous injuries, knee surgery, shoulder, wrist, broken orbitals and things like that. And he's never been too worried about anything, but when it comes to the brain or neurological thing, he, he definitely uh, did strike a concern for his career. I, I saw a clip online and I don't know how old it is, but uh, you were on some sort of uh, talk show in, in, in South Korea and uh, they, they revealed that you 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 teach yourself not to blink when you're training for fights because you don't want to blink in the fight and they were trying to make you blink by doing things to your face and you weren't blinking how long i don't know how old that clip was but how long have you been doing that and how hard is it not to actually blink in a fight <laughs> <clears throat> he, he thinks that all UFC fighters or fighters in general don't blink. I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. 
<laughs> that's not a normal thing. And we talked about it during this camp too with uh, some of our training partners. He's like, that kid does not blink when they're hitting him and stuff like that. Um, he's just dialed in when it comes to, to uh, like tunnel vision when he spars. But uh, he, he says he hasn't practiced it really. It just comes somewhat natural from sparring and keeping his eyes open and, and staying, uh, keeping his eyes on the prize. But he doesn't practice it. So I'm not quite sure what the show said, but I do remember that clip as well. And uh, he's saying he doesn't practice it. He thinks everybody doesn't blink either. Okay, fair enough. Um, have the UFC told you or your management team, anyone surrounding you, that if you win this fight, you will get a title shot, that you'll be next for Alexander Volkanovsky? Uh, yeah, he was saying that Dana had an interview stating that whoever wins this fight will be the number one contender. <clears throat> I think Sean Shelby said it as well. And then uh, he believes that there's no way that it can't be a number one type, uh, contention title, whoever wins this fight. And so then I have to ask, because after uh, Volkanovski's win over Max Holloway in July, on your now infamous Instagram page, you, you referred to him as a shameful champion, and, and you were not very, uh, you were not very impressed with his performance. Uh, why, why was that? Hard fought victory. Uh, I know a lot of people thought Holloway won, but it, it seems like Volkanovski kind of rubs you the wrong way as a champion. Why is that? Volkanovski Holloway sounds like that. You got your pages champion champion. You know, Volkanovski not me under the Okay, 더 이상 트레스 토크는 안할 안할 거지만 <웃음> 안할 건데 근데 그 경기는 솔직히 할로웨이가 이겼다고 저는 생각하고 있고 많은 팬들이 또 그렇게 생각을 하고 있고요. So he's not going to trash talk from here on out like what he told you earlier, but he'll just leave it at he he thought the Holloway won. A lot of the fans thought that so as well, and so he said I'll leave it at that. Okay, fair. Okay, well then, can I just ask about the? Uh... The psychology behind the no more trash talk rule because it did bring him a lot of attention right i mean obviously zombie is one of the legends of the sport and people love him uh the greatest mma t-shirt of all time he's now wearing a uh a, a new variation of that but i love it it's tremendous um but why now like why is it a full stop no more criticism towards opponents or potential opponents is it because of what happened to jay and now that was a lesson learned <laughs> so, kind of, kind of like earlier, he just said, uh, first, first and foremost, nobody believes that the trash talking is him. Mm. Um, and so, and the second is that because, you know, one of his friends got hurt with Jay. And then the other thing is that uh, he goes, even you're asking constantly about it, <laughs> the trash talking and uh, about Jay and stuff like that. So he just wants to kind of nip it at the butt. Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I remember that uh, interview that we all did with Jay and stuff like that. We were talking about it, what he, he wanted to say a few things in English and stuff like that, but that, that was all him. And there's no perfect translation when it comes to, I think any dialect in, in two different languages, uh, if anything, uh, I think Jay downplayed it kind of, you know, he didn't make it more disrespectful when he said it in Korean, when he was ducking him or running from him or something like that. And so, but yeah, for that reason, he's just kind of toning it down a little bit. Um, he's going to go back to his old ways of just staying silent and let his uh, hands do the talking. Um, and, and, and again, I respect that. Um, you know, yesterday on my show with Daniel Cormier, we talked about your t-shirt and I called it the greatest MMA t-shirt of all time. Uh, he was unfamiliar with it, but I was educating him and, and you continue to evolve it and update it and whatnot. And I think that's actually helped your relationship with the fans because not a lot of fighters have a look like that. And I'm wondering how big of a part he is, Zombie is in the branding of the Korean zombie and these shirts and whatnot. And, and is he surprised that more fighters don't do this? Because I really think it has helped his popularity over the years.
일단 좀비라는 닉네임 자체가 조금 그런 브랜딩이 자, 돼 있는 거잖아요. 그러니까 조금 내가 만들기 쉬운 것 같고 어, DC랑 그리고 인터뷰한 것도 봤는데 아까도 DC 잠깐 만나셨잖아요. 음, 음. 다시 만나면 제가 티셔츠 주겠다고 얘기했죠. <웃음> So he said, uh, the, the name Zombies, already, it's so easy to brand, and uh, I think that's one reason. Um, we saw, we walked across, we passed by DC, the other, I think it was earlier today. Our times are so messed up. We've been sleeping like two hours here and there. I'm sure you already heard from every other person that's been on this island. Um, so he said, uh, let DC know, and, and you as well earlier, I think we spoke, that he'll get you guys, send you guys the t-shirt. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. And I'm just curious, how did you get to, to Fight Island? Because I know like the guys in America were going to Vegas and then in Europe, they go to London, but you don't hear a lot about uh, the Asian-based fighters. So what's the, the journey from South Korea to Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I already knew the answer to it, but <laughs> I wanted to let him say it. Is it basically a direct flight? Uh, flight? We didn't have to go. Um, I know I spoke with Captain for Paulo. They had to go from Brazil to, I think, England, quarantine there, and then come over here. We were fortunate enough to, we, we got COVID tests done a couple of days before the flight. And then um, we were able to get on the, um, we can't remember what airline they use, but uh, it was a direct flight. It was about a nine hour flight. And then we came here, quarantined for two days. And then that was it. And and life in in South Korea, what is it like? It, the, it, does it resemble how it is in America? Is it worse? Is it better? Uh, the restrictions in terms of training and, and daily life. What is it like right now? Uh, I think everything's open. When I when I first got there two months ago, they took us from the airport, quarantined us for two weeks. So he would send us videos, uh, sparring videos, and, and uh, we were interacting that way. But um, at that time, the gyms were closed. The minute I got out after two weeks, the gyms were starting to open up, but Zombie decided to keep his gym closed at that time just to focus on the fight. And so um, there was no one in the gym. We literally had the whole gym to ourselves, which was nice. And uh, they're under 100 cases a day, I believe. Corona is under 100 cases a day. One of the things I, I noticed was different than the US, I don't know how they do it in Canada, but um, they have everybody has a QR code. It's like a like your social security number, whatever it may be on your phone. So any restaurant that you go to, you got to sign in the time, the date, and then you scan your code on the phone. So the government literally knows where you are at all times if you're going anywhere and they won't let you in without it. And then so wow. for us, for foreigners, we didn't have to do that. They just, what we wrote down theirs. But if anything has an outbreak, if somebody gets, goes to the hospital a week later, whatever it may be, they'll go back to that list. Since everybody that was on that list within an hour of a city in that area, they'll quarantine right away and shut it down. Wow. And so they'll stop any outbreak, literally. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, other than yeah. the government following you at all times, but I, I can yeah. totally uh, understand why they would want to do that at this juncture. Uh, just a couple more questions before I let you go. I know you guys have to run, so I appreciate the time very much. Um, you know, at this point in your career, you might be, as you said, one fight away from fighting for the belt. I remember when you fought for the belt against Jose Aldo, mm -hmm. feels like many, many moons ago took that fight on short notice after an injury and whatnot. What is the difference between this Chan Sung Jung and the one who fought Jose Aldo at UFC 163? <laughs> 막 싸우고 싶은 그런 욕뭐 그런 걸로만 싸웠는데 지금은 이제 뭐 게임 플랜도 있고 뭐, 뭐 스킬도 많이 늘었고 그리고 훌륭한 코치들도 많이 나한테 생겼고 모든 게다 바뀌었어요. 그리고 멘탈적인 것도 내가 결혼도 하고 아기도 생기고 그러면서도 다 싸진 것 같아요. So it's, it's night and day. He said that when he fought Aldo, he was like a college student, you know, around that age. Um, his physique has gotten better, skill set's gotten better. Back in the days, his uh, mindset was just go out there and fight, and, you know, no real game plan and so forth. Now he's got, um, he, he gotten married, he's matured a little bit, uh, reason to fight for, he's got three kids, uh, he's got better coaches. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I'm literally translating. <laughs> sure, sure, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a camp behind him, um, 
we got game plans together. His physique is a lot better. He's just a complete night and day fighter. Well, it does seem like you guys have a really great partnership. And, uh, and I wanted to ask him, you know, why he feels like he works so well with you, Eddie. Um, it seemed like for a while he was trying to find that guy, the guru, the head coach, if you will. And now he's found him and it's obviously led to great results. So why, in his opinion, does he feel like this is working out so well between the two of you? It's, it's kind of hard to explain. There's a lot of little, little minor things and there's some big things, but um, <clears throat> like he, we've increased his power or I've increased his power, just on little tweaks. And it's not necessarily me too. A lot of people give me credit, which is awesome, but like, our strength and conditioning coach, Chad E.K., he put six pounds of muscle um, for where he was at last camp, like two weeks out, and uh, that really increased. Um, he talked about how I corrected some of his footwork, gauging distance and range. Um, what else did he say? Um, and he said, most people will kind of see it if you've ever trained before, and then if, you, if we work together, that you would see, you would notice little things, just su little subtle things. Um, but yeah, it's kind of hard to translate because he's trying to toot my horn and yeah, yeah, it sounds like you. I'm trying to toot my own. You no, know I mean? understand. But uh, but yeah, he says it's just a lot of little minor things and then the bigger things, um, but it, it's completely changed his whole game. Okay, and final question, and I promise this isn't a trash talk question, but I did see an interview with you, Eddie, where you predicted a knockout, correct? Um, and uh, I just wanted yeah, to know- probably. And I just wanted to know if he agreed that that you know the prediction will be knockout on Saturday or Sunday morning. Over there. So he said, I'm not going to trash talk either, but um, when Holloway fought Ortega, he hit him about 300 times. And he said that about five times in a row too. So he's really uh, <coughs> making a statement, but uh, he hit him about 300 times, which gives him the conclusion that he's got a really good chin. So he's not trying to go for knockouts or anything like that, but he wants to hit him about 300 times as well. We'll leave it at that. Zombie, thank <laughs> you so much. Good luck to you this weekend. Eddie, thank you so much as well. Good luck to you guys. You. Can't wait for the fight. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you, brother. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.